everyone. Welcome to another episode of Our First Year. Um, today we have two special guests, one which is our new peer mentor. I'm Liv, um, back for another one, and we're going to have our new peer mentor introduce herself now. Hi, I'm Addie. I'm a new peer mentor here at SDI. Um, I'm a music business major. This is my third year, and I'm really excited about this. You guys are going to be hearing my voice often from now on. And we also have another special guest that we know of already. Gabe! (laughs) Gabe is here again. Um, And today we're going to be talking about kind of life away from home as students who have traveled from uh, different areas of the country or out of the country to be here. So um, I am originally from Maine. So that's about like a two and a half hour flight from here. Um, and it's very different from Chicago, of course. And yeah, so if you guys want to tell them where you're from. Um, I'm from Northern Virginia, which is like an hour and a half by plane and about 15 hours max when you're driving. Um, so it's not that close and it is totally different from the city of Chicago. Uh, I'm from Korea, but I was born and raised in Hong Kong. Um, sheer flight duration might be like 15 hours for me. It's, it, it sounds crazy, but you get used to it. So, um, what was the reason you wanted to come to somewhere so different um, in the States? And then for you, what made you want to come to the U.S.? For me, it was kind of like I didn't really have much of a choice because I was pursuing something that didn't have a lot of options in the U.S. Like, I originally applied as a music major, um, and finding a contemporary music program in the U.S. is far and few between. So I had like three or four options and none of them were in Virginia. So off bat, didn't have a choice. Um, And then second off, I I think I just, you know, after COVID, because I was graduating class of high school in 2021, I was just ready for change. So it was really appealing to me for me to come far away. I didn't think too much about it, to be honest. I'm pretty much similar in a sense where like, there was not much going on for like at home. Like I don't think there's much like music programs or music technology programs back in Hong Kong. So one of the things I was like, you know what, I'm growing. I've been in this fucking small ass city for so long. I want to leave. So I took the chance to leave to and come to Chicago. I didn't really want to go L. A. where everyone fucking goes or New York. And somehow I ended up in Chicago because of a tip from my old like counselor. Yeah, I'm the same. I didn't have obviously there's no like film programs really that will get me good opportunities in Maine so I also just kind of ended up here um yeah so what has been like the biggest difference for you from home and to coming to Chicago um probably weather I don't know that like the seasons here are just different from Virginia. Like, I don't feel fall come, I don't feel spring come. Like, I think that was a huge adjustment for me because in Virginia, like, the cherry blossom festival is a huge thing. So, like, once the cherry blossoms start blooming, you're like, oh, it's spring. And here, like, you don't really have a spring. It, like, starts getting slightly warm and then all of a sudden it's summer. They all, like, mush together. Exactly. So, I think just, like, being able to make my own, like, traditions with, like, seasons and holidays and stuff like that, like, I didn't have what I had back home, so that was a hard adjustment here. Mm-hmm. For me, I think it's a big change just because it's like a huge cultural difference. Um, one of the things, is, again, weather, first of all, 100%, because in Hong Kong, we don't have winter. So it's like kind of like Florida weather all the time, like super hot and humid. Uh, so that was a big change in that. I think another thing would be like the kind of like what everyone, how everyone like acts what i mean by that it's like opening the door for like a stranger that you don't know like when they're trying to come in right behind you or it could be something so small as like saying hi to the bus driver and like having a conversation with them or even a stranger so i think those like small changes really like it shows out Mm -hmm. what is one like cultural difference that really shocked you and then what is like if you one cultural difference that you wish was stayed that was here that's also in hong kong does that make sense so i'll try to answer the best okay Mm. um but i think one thing i see different culturally here would be like again the keep it's a different like not it's not so the keep to yourself mentality here 
um, back home it was really like apparent. Like you would not talk to a stranger. You mm-hmm. would not talk to like, you wouldn't even strike up a conversation with someone you don't know. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like nowadays I would say hi to security guard, like to the janitors, whatever, all, all these people. But back home that's not normal because um, I guess they have a lot of like worry about yourself mentality. Mm-hmm. Like I'll do good. Everyone else is going through their shit, so mm-hmm. like we'll keep it separate. Mm-hmm. Um, I do wish for that like social aspect of like talking to each other is more apparent, just because uh, I think that's something that's really lacking in Asian communities. Is like at least back home, it was like they have this fake fake click, but I wish that it's not a click, but it's more like everyone else. So mm-hmm. that's one thing I think um, I wish we could have taken from here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like and yeah. what's one thing you wish we would take from hong kong so i think one thing would be uh like besides all like the government stuff you know <laughs> you know what i mean like what i mean by that is just like we have a lot of programs that helps uh like just normal like civilians out uh, mm-hmm. something could be like as simple as like uh like health care i know mm-hmm. that's small stuff uh I do think America, what they can do at least is, like, I would say, let me let me flesh that out a little <laughs> bit more. I don't want to say something like, I don't mean. Mm. Um, I wish that it was, everyone was just more nice to each other, like, they're more open. A lot of times, because they're not open with each other, I always, like, see competition as like a really big thing like a lot of I feel like a lot of POCs can relate where they're like they're always constantly compared to someone else mm-hmm. and I feel like that thing happens because they don't talk to the other person or like uh, whoever they're talking about it's more so what they hear and mm-hmm. what they see but that only happens because that that sense of community like talking to each other mm-hmm. something so small yeah I think it's we can take away from that mm. Yeah, one thing for me also that's super different from back home is I grew up in a really, like, Indian-American community, so I didn't really feel, like, loneliness. There was other, like, issues within that, like, similar to what you said, like, competition academically and just, like, different cultural things that we were pulling that I wish we didn't, but, you know, just, like, that sense of community I don't really have here. Like, most of the time in my classes, I'm the only Indian person. I, like, can probably count all of the Indian people I've seen on campus with one hand. (laughs) So getting adjusted to that and just, like, trying to find some, like, middle ground where it's, like, I still want to feel connected to that, but also I have to adjust to where I'm at. Like, that was hard, but it's slowly but surely, like, becoming easier. That's, like, the opposite for me. Really? In Maine, as you can imagine, (laughs) it's literally all white people. Like, I don't think I went to school with an Asian person for my whole 12 years of being there. Oh, my God. Like, I literally don't think. We had, like, maybe, like, five African-American people in my grade. Mm -hmm. Maybe 20 in the whole school. And, like, I don't know if we had any Indian students. Maybe two or three here and there. So it's like coming to Chicago was the complete opposite, which I like, of course, because then I can learn a lot more about other people's cultures, especially because like, I don't know, I just feel like I didn't really learn that much about people other than white people (laughs) for like 12 years of my life. So that was a huge adjustment for me in a good way. Mm -hmm. So kind of the opposite of y'all. But um, what, so for you, what is one thing you wish you could take from home here? Well, I don't think it's, like, something specific to Virginia as it, much as it is kind of, like, suburban life of just, like, I don't know, there's just, like, more families around. Mm-hmm. Like, when I'm here, I have to, like, go out of my way to find, like, family places because I'm always around other college students. Mm-hmm. So, like, places where it's just, like, where I see, like, kids running around or, like, families together and hanging out, like, stuff like that. Like, I don't know, I just kind of miss being in that environment sometimes because it mm-hmm. can be kind of lonely when you're, like, not near your family, right? So yeah. Yeah, that's something I miss. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It's very, like, city. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. you have to, if you want to see that during in the city, you have to go to, like, the actual residential neighborhoods exactly. and stuff. So, or, like, a I park. I see what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like I'm just, like, always <clears throat> on my own, and everybody around me is always on their own. Mm-hmm. Or with, like, one other person. Yeah. It's, like, never, really like, big groups, especially with families and stuff like that, which is definitely weird, because I'm also used to, like, going just walking outside my house and like having families on walks and all that kind of stuff it's just it's such a big difference um 
what what do you think is the hardest part about being far away from home I think I think this is like a college student experience like universally of just like being like you have to do everything by yourself like Mm. I don't know the family unit is just so helpful because you help each other out like you're the burden of like the entire house chores are not on you like Mm -hmm. you spread the you spread like the burden out you help each other out like obviously you can find that with friends but like if it's your first year and you like don't have anyone that you know here that's so like hard Mm -hmm. like that adjustment to like finding a community and like building that yourself versus it possibly already you already having that like Mm -hmm. I guess you could come in not having that but yeah that was really hard for me yeah what about you I mean I pretty much lived alone for like the last six to seven years now um so I'm getting used to it pretty much but like, I still remember the first feeling for me was just, like, uh, it felt weird because I have my own room, like, in my dorm room and everything, but I couldn't really call it home. Mm-hmm. Like, you know that feeling when you first move out? Um, yeah. yeah. I'm like, and it, it was very awkward for me to be like, yeah, uh, I'm going to head home right now, right now. And I'm just like, is that the right word? I'm mm-hmm. going to head to my dorm. And I always, like, mix that up. Uh, but I think the one thing I really did, like, I guess miss in a sense was, like, or actually not miss but more so i understood was the what like parents would do like what my mom did mm-hmm. like you know i'm just like you notice all the things yeah, yeah. yeah i'm just like fuck like i gotta do the dishes every day like buying that, toilet paper yeah yeah. Like, that, yeah that was the biggest thing i'm like how the fuck do i get groceries and pa- mm. toilet paper in the same time as two different trips like sweeping the floor yeah. oh my god like, and like cleaning the toilet <laughs> my dad has done that for my whole life like that is something you just forget about like yeah. the little things like of course i always cleaned my room and that stuff but like the rest of the house like you said sweeping the floors like mopping the floors i'm like was my mom really doing all that yeah. like you kind of forget about how much that they actually do when you have like you said when the burden's all on you to do everything yeah um, so that kind of brings me into another question, especially cause I, like living with families, I think that it's really interesting that, um, in America, like it's normal for kids to move out at 18 and like be completely on their own. Like you said, there's that idea that like we're completely on our own, especially when you're so far away from home and you can't like go home for help. Um, what do you think of that i'm actually curious specifically for you because i know a lot of times in asia like people will live with their parents until they're married um i don't know how it is in india as well it's the same yeah so it's like what what do y'all think of that and like do you think do you wish that america was like that too okay i can go first so um in terms of like the idea of staying with the parents um I think it's accepted that we leave the house or go to college or whatever we need to do and start gaining independence on that age. But, um, like, I think the main idea is that you can leave, but it's your home still. Mm -hmm. So how a lot of the parents would act is just like, oh, you can move out, but you better, like, see me once a week or something. Mm -hmm. That kind of vibe, you know? And the it's just that idea of like filial like responsibility Mm -hmm. and like that confucianism that old like eastern like ideals of respecting your elders or your parents or whoever raised you so i think it just goes back to the idea that oh i raised you like till you're like a full adult now like where you can take care of me now Mm -hmm. and i think that's what a lot of like asian parents would like look through that's also why they want you to get a good job or like a stable job is so that like you can be stable in your own life but then you know like can help out basically Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's something that bleeds into indian american communities too because like i don't know how you guys classify first gen but if you classify first gen as like the first generation to be born here then like for me like i feel like our parents like still carry that on like they don't kick us out right at 18 or anything like that and i think that that's like a broader concept of just like community like how that's valued there versus here like Mm -hmm. I don't know I feel like there's like a concept of like a nuclear family here where like you're made you need to go out and like make your own family unit and that just like repeats mm-hmm. and like you just let your kids go like every man for themselves sort of thing yeah um versus for at least like Indian American communities I feel like it's like your parents are always going to be part of your life like sometimes that's like to like a burden to some extent like for some people that's like they have opinions on who you marry and like what you do like what your job is and stuff like that but like 
I, I like the overall concept of, like, you're never alone just because you're an adult now. Like, mm-hmm. you'll figure it out. Like, you'll figure it out together, like, through some form of help, whether that be, like, financially or, like, just emotionally, so. Yeah, it's, like, here some parents are, like, oh, you're 18. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, for people who, like, didn't move out right at, like, 18, it's frowned upon. Mm-hmm. When that really makes no sense, like, financially. Like, if I went to school somewhere near my home, I would be living at home. It's like we just happen to go to somewhere far away. Exactly. But it's so interesting, the difference in, like, cultures as well. Like you said, even, like, Indian American communities, like, still carry that, which is interesting. Um, so how do you, how do you cope with being so far away when you get, like, homesick or when you miss your family or you just miss certain things about where you're from? I think in the beginning I was, like, really trying to find ways to, like, just like get rid of the homesickness like I didn't want to feel it like I was like oh like I have to find a way to like replace the feeling of homesickness but now it's like something I just carry with me like it's like if I miss home or like I miss something about home that I can't get here like that's okay Mm -hmm. but the more like my first year the more I like stayed in and was just like sad about things like it would just be cyclical like I would never be able to like create new traditions here and like meet new people here and like create this into its own home like yeah so homesickness it's like when I feel it it's like sometimes I'll just call my parents or Mm. like call a friend back home um and other times I'm just like I need to go see my friends here like I need to go outside and like do something I enjoy doing here Mm because now at this point in my life I'm like this is also home yeah so for me because my parents were like immigrants in Hong Kong like from Korea to Hong Kong like I guess for us it's like the dynamic is we're very used to moving out of countries or moving uh, elsewhere but you know homesickness is what everyone feels and everything uh for me there's no way for me to cope because i remember like when i first came to chicago uh i was still 17 and uh i came here all, all alone i flew alone moved in alone to the dorms uh, i had to set up like fo- like phone uh bank all that but it's like that homesickness for me it was just like i couldn't leave it i couldn't like i didn't really try to like get over it or anything i think i let myself sit on it a lot of times and i mean it felt really long you know like those days were like fucking long but uh i think it's just you like for me my coping was just feel that fucking emotion feel it all out and then uh like do whatever i can or do my best to move on Cause, like, I've already lived in Chicago for like six years now. So, like, imagine like now moving forward, I can't keep feeling that homesickness. But I do think that certain things I do at home, like uh, how I decorate things, how I clean uh, certain stuff, how I organize like the rooms or closet, it's it helps me build the mindset that this is my home, at least my apartment. And I think the idea of lamenting that this is my second home really helped me cope that I'm not, I'm away from my original Mm -hmm. place. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I felt. Yeah, like, I think one thing that I got lucky with was, like, a lot of my friends my freshman year were people who were, like, born and raised in Chicago. Um, So I I wasn't surrounded by people that were, like, scared to go out and scared to explore by themselves. Like, they were just like, oh, we're going here. Are you coming? And I would, like, naturally learn how to use the train system or use the bus system. Like, I knew people my first year that, like, for the first, like, two months didn't go anywhere except, like, on campus. Mm -hmm. And I think because, like, their whole life was just like class and back to the dorms it was like not easy to get over the homesickness at all because it was just like how would that feel like home like we're in downtown like this place is like there's not it's not residential there's barely any trees here unless you go to grant park like yeah that was helpful to have people from chicago yeah my freshman year i was rooming with two um juniors so they really helped with that as well Mm -hmm. And I feel like they would kind of, like, force me and my other roommate that were was a freshman to, like, go out and be like, oh, we should do this, we should do this. And kind of get me to know other parts of the city where I feel like I could go to, to, like, feel like home, kind of. Um, for me, I feel like freshman year, I was, when I came to Chicago, I was like, no way, I'm going to be homesick, I don't care, like, I don't even want to be at home. And then it, like, came on in, like, weird ways. I don't know if that, like makes sense but even just when I'd go outside I'd be like oh like Mm -hmm. (laughs) it doesn't smell like fall like those kinds of things 
I feel like I notice more than being like, oh, I miss my family, which like, of course you do, but it like manifests in different ways. And like freshman year, I would go home for like, I went home for Thanksgiving, Christmas and for the summers. This past summer was the first summer I actually stayed here. And that's when it like really started to feel like this was my home because I was here for one full year, like continuously. And I even like spent Thanksgiving here with my grandpa. So it like really felt like it, which I think helped like honestly just like kind of getting over the like hurdle of feeling like that for me was it at least. And I feel like a lot of like you said, like freshmen will just sit on it. It's like you kind of just have to plow through it. I feel like (laughs) to get over it, like just go and do other stuff. Yeah. And, like, like you said, find other traditions here that, like, you look forward to. Um, but, yeah, as somebody from that, like, wasn't from the Midwest even remotely, like, it just felt like I couldn't find anything to do that was similar mm-hmm. to, like, New England. So it was hard to, like, make new traditions for me. Um, yeah, so I think, I don't know what you all think, but I feel like it is just, like, this idea like you said, kind of, of home is so different, like, you can kind of, like, create it yourself, so going more deeply into how you think people can, like, make this space feel like home, what do you have on recommendations for that? For me, I think it's, like, a lot of things that we were talking about, um, I think the first big hurdle for me actually was not going home for once during the break, like, during the Mm -hmm. break, like, Mm -hmm. I remember my first year, like, I was just, I had, I wanted to go home, like, mm-hmm. uh, so every time, like, a day or two early, if I can, like, before the semester ends, I would leave, mm-hmm. um, but I realized that once I moved to my new apartment after the dorms, I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm paying for a one month, like, like, 12 month lease, I have to stay here now, mm-hmm. like, it's such a waste to just move out, I'm like, uh, and then force my stay, force myself to stay, uh, in, at least in the US, and I think that helped me a lot with going forth just because like how you just said uh now i don't know how to like spend my summer here like it's Mm -hmm. very different Mm -hmm. so me just experiencing the summer here or like winter break here really did help me go through like go through it another thing for me was like that decorating Mm -hmm. like making that space yourself i think it really plays a part because if you have a place that you can find like undeniable comfort i think that's the best thing that can come for you Mm -hmm. because if you're homesick, that means you're not com- you're in discomfort. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, for me it was also like I had to like figure out like why did I like want to be here? Like there was a reason I came here. There was something that like I was like I don't want to stay in Virginia Virginia necessarily. Like there's something in Chicago that I'm seeking. So once I like started pushing more into that, like obviously I'm into music, like going out and like seeing what the city has to offer that Virginia does not necessarily. There's a lot of DIY shows here, there's a lot of free things, there's like underground stuff like there's just a lot of different things to do that I didn't have access to there before um so like finding like my niche interests here things that I couldn't pursue over there like I think that also helped me make this place feel more like home Mm -hmm. um because it helped me like tap into a part of myself that and my interests that I didn't really get to explore before um same with friendships like I don't know I feel like an art school attracts a certain type of person like in terms of passion and in terms of just like how you view other people and like just kind of like your freeness of your mind so meeting those types of people like going to like uh things like aso or asian student organization where i'm like around people that look like me and think like me it was really helpful to find like really good friends like Mm. same with um sdi and lgbtq plus social that was really good for me to talk Mm. to other people at that and i like made some friends that i'm still super close to today so uh kind of pushing at what the city has to offer and what our school has to offer that was really helpful for me Yeah, sometimes, like, when I'm walking, like, to class or something, I have to just think about, like, it is so cool that I get to be here, and I feel like that just helps, like, being, like, just remembering how grateful I am to actually be in a big city and attending such, like, an awesome school, but, um, I think that helps. It's, like, I've kind of transitioned from, like, when I would go outside, I'd kind of be, like, ooh, (laughs) to now I'm, like, oh, I'm so happy to be here, and it's kind of just, like, I don't know, you have to find the good things about it. But um, going back to friends, for, I don't know for you, but for me, like, nobody from my high school came here. Um, And I had some friends where, like, they know people from, like, their high school that came here, too, even from far places. 
And how did you both like deal with finding friends because for me like I came in 2020 so that didn't help and I'm also like incredibly introverted so to find friends even in a space where like you feel comfortable like ASO or SDI it still can be hard to like talk to people especially when they're from a completely different area and you're like what do we even have in common Mm -hmm. so what do you recommend for people coming here alone like to make friends for like speaking in a personal experience like I'm not going to say I'm a social butterfly, but more so, I think I was lucky that I was in the dorms at the very least. Uh, I was in the apartments. I was in the semi-suites, too. Um, so, like, one of my first friends was actually my suite mate. Uh, his name's Gibby. Well, Gibson. I call him Gibby. Mm. Uh, he from the suburbs here, uh, but he doesn't know the city at all as well. So, having him there just talk to me out of nowhere, I think once you find that one friend or one person that you can connect with, I think it'll scaffold to more. So I would say, like, maybe put yourself into situations where you're able to meet like-minded people, whether it be, like, talking to someone in class that you're like, oh, this person seems interesting. Like, I think it all starts with, like, taking that first step of starting that combo. Because mm. there's no guarantee that someone else is going to start that conversation with you. So I would say, like, if you're interested in someone, like, once you muster up the courage to say hi or, like, talk to them, I think everything is just history. The flow would go. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. But I think it's very optimistic of me. <laughs> well, I try to think now, like, the worst they could say is, like, no. Yeah. And then you've just been rejected and you'll get over it. Like, that's kind of how I think. Like, it's better to think that way than to be like, what if they hate me? Oh, my gosh. Like, yeah, they just won't be your friend. And then you'll move on and find other friends. But for me, too, it was, like, my freshman year. It was me and three other people. And so we were kind of, like... And like I said before, it was COVID. So we were, we worked to class at home. That was it. So we were kind of forced to like each other and like <laughs> hang out with each other, which worked. Like one of them is still my best friend. So like that isn't necessarily going to work now. But if you're put into like a dorm with somebody, I think you should try your best like to get to know them. Because sometimes I feel like people coming into college are like, I don't really care to know my roommates. Like we're just roommates. But I feel like those are the people you are going to end up spending most of your time with. So it's good to get to know them. Like, I was similar to you where I didn't have anyone from high school. Like, I literally knew no one. Um, And my first year was honestly a little rough now that I think about it. Like, one thing that helped was, one, being in dorms. Like, I shared a room with someone. I would see them every day. Like, we got along. It was good. Like, I I needed that to start off with. Like, Mm -hmm. I just needed to, like, not be alone. Like, that was kind of the first thing for me. But after that, like... One random thing that happened was, you know how we have, like, that connections thing here for first year? Mm. Um, It just so happened that, like, the group of people that I met at that connections are people I'm still close to now. Like, it Mm -hmm. just, it magically worked out like that. But I think the biggest thing that I learned, like, was, I don't know, people in college, like, they come and go. You're going to meet someone that's cool and you're going to be like, hey, and you're going to have a great conversation. But if you don't maintain some sort of relationship with them, like... The next time you see them, it's going to be awkward. Like, Mm -hmm. because enough time has been, has passed where it's like, you don't really know how to feel it out. So one thing I did, like, with one of my closest friends here, like I said, I met her at that LGBTQ plus social. And I was like, immediate, like, let's hang out tomorrow. Like, let's make a plan tomorrow. And we did make a plan tomorrow. And then we made a plan like a few days after that. Mm -hmm. And it just kept going. Like, it is like a lot of initiative. And I think that comes from like internal confidence. Like my first year, like, I don't think I made as many friends as I could have like I met a group of people and I got comfortable with that group of people and then I was like well I'm good now but Mm -hmm. I wasn't good like I was like those people weren't always available to me they had their own lives like I couldn't rely on that so from then on out I was like I need to make a consistent effort Mm -hmm. to make friends like that being around new people and like having those new perspectives and stuff like that like that was really important for me to feel more confident in myself and like my like networking quote-unquote abilities but just like being able to connect to people you know um so like you said like I went to ASO the first year that wasn't easy like I wasn't like immediately like oh like I thought people were cool but I wasn't like hey like we're best friends now like Mm. it took a second for me to get comfortable and be like I am like in the same position as any of these other people like let's just talk to them Mm. so I think I've been lucky like most I haven't really had any experiences at Columbia where like I made a conversation with someone and they ignored me or something yeah. like that like, yeah that like never happens if that happens <laughs> yeah. yeah that's on them like, that's yeah. on them you dodged a bullet mm-hmm. yeah I feel like like everything is so laid out for you in high school like you meet those people 
and probably kindergarten and you're <laughs> literally with them for 12 years mm-hmm. and it's like you meet your core friends and you're just with them because you see them every day like it's so easy and in college it's like the complete opposite mm-hmm. you could see somebody one day and never see them again that's true and like I personally have had like really good friends freshman and sophomore year that I'm not even friends with anymore and that would never happen in high school because it's like you have to see each other every day so it's like you're not gonna not be friends with somebody and here it's so different like I feel like you cycle through friends a lot easier which is hard like for me especially I always had the same friend group in high school so it was hard for me to like learn that you're not gonna be best friends with everybody forever because that's just how it is in high school and like I've like three really close friends back home that I've known for since sixth grade so it's like that's kind of a really big difference for me that I had to cope with um especially like being far away from those really close friends but like you said I feel like it was just networking abilities (laughs) even if you start a conversation like hey you're in film I am too like whatever and just like what's your favorite film that kind of stuff like you'll find a lot of really common things with each other like even us I was like oh, do you like this? And you were like, yeah. And then now we've, like, talked about a bunch of different things just because of that. Yeah. And it's, like, I think that that can develop something really good. Or it can turn into nothing, and at least you had the experience of, like, you got yourself out there and you built that confidence. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's really, really hard. And yeah, you you have to learn to, like, get through that. Because freshman year was rough. Yeah. Like, I think for everybody. <laughs> like, uh, trying, for you guys. trying to make a friends it. is, like, Oh, it's this is easy. the worst. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. downplay that because it was yeah. hard. Like, Oh, it was so hard. Yeah. Doesn't it feel like y'all's world is, like, getting bigger? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, just bursting everything that you knew? Yeah, yeah, literally. It's like your life is in so many different places now. Like, mm-hmm. if I had gone to, like, the closest college near my house, like, everything would have been a little bit more, like, I don't know, contained. Like, even though my friends would have been wherever. Mm. But now it's just like, oh, my God, I have different homes. Like, I have people in different places. Like, that's a lot to deal with mm-hmm. at first. I think it, I think also like from hearing your y'all, y'all's experience, it's like you just need to like kind of what's the word like understand, and then the other thing would be like kind of like learn that that ideal that oh it's not like high school like you have to understand that uh, not everyone is gonna have like that kind of like sheep mindset if you know what I mean because I feel like a lot of times in high school. Like, generally, what's popular is going to be what's the popular there. Mm-hmm. What everyone should be liking, it's, like, there already. Mm-hmm. But once you go to college, it's that realization that it's not always like that. Yeah. Like that's, And I think people just need to make that realization and then kind of, like, you know, like you said, take your time, gather yourself up, and then, like, go out there. So I think that realization is very important. Yeah. At the very least. I think it's, like, an initiative thing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, in college, I feel like, especially for freshmen, from what I've noticed, is people are really focused on romantic relationships, like, immediately getting into that in college, which you don't want to do that, that's fine, but I feel like you need to put as much, if not more, effort into friendships. Like, those are also important, like, community-building relationships in your life. Like, they take effort. You can't ignore someone for, like, weeks on end after hanging out with them and be like, why aren't they talking to mm. me again? Like, you just can't do that. Like, you're friends, and you deserve each other's time. So, yeah, I think if you're someone who, like, struggles with that, like, that might be something to think about. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, I don't know, the way you said it, just, like, your whole world, like, kind of blows up and expands is, like, so true. Yeah. <laughs> like, now I have friends all over the country. It's like, what does that even mean? Like, why? what do you mean my best friend's in California? Like, that doesn't make any sense. It's just, like, it's such a difference between going, oh, I'll just t- drive 10 minutes to my yeah. friend's house. And now it's like, oh, I can't even walk 10 minutes to my friend's house now. It's, like, such an interesting difference. Yeah, the convenience of just, like, having the people you love around you at all times. Like, mm-hmm. that's just not there anymore. Yeah. It's making plans to hang out. That's yes. the big yeah. part. For that's me. the rough I'm just part, saying, yeah. You gotta make actual plans yeah. before. Also, like, like, with schedules. Like, in high school, everybody goes to school 7.30 to, what, 3 o'clock maybe. And you maybe have after school sports, and then you're done. And then you have the weekends off. It's, like here i'm like oh i have class till 9 30 someone's like what oh sorry i can't hang out all day i have a three two three hour classes it's like it's yeah. just it's also, scheduling we like go to a commuter school so like people are in and out like i don't know there's not as big of a dorm population so mm-hmm. sometimes you only see your friends when they're on campus yeah and that's hard like mm-hmm. getting used to just like the i don't know kind of semi-adulthood of like we're not all in the same place at the same time we all have like our lives are bigger than just, like, school and mm-hmm. school. Like, yeah, that that's hard. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, agreed. Well, I think that's all the questions I had. Was there anything else y'all wanted to add for students who are coming far from home or anything? Mm. Students coming from big cultural differences? Well, besides, like, trying to summarize what we all talked about, I would say just come to SDI and, like, just talk to us. Mm. That's the best way I'd say, like, um, it's one thing to experience it, uh, like, yourself and, like, fail. It's another thing to also, like, hear or get that affirmation from other like students that, mm-hmm. that they're not like alone or it's not like anything crazy out of the ordinary you know what i mean yeah. yeah i also think like school is just one piece of your life so like if you're struggling to find all like the things here then that means you might just need to look elsewhere like this is a big city there's a lot of people there's a lot of ways to connect with people there's facebook groups for college students stuff like that so like if like the types of people here or like the demographics of people here are not necessarily reflective of you then like don't be restricted by that like there is a there's a lot of people here so mm-hmm. i'm sure we can help you with finding resources for that so yeah talk to i us. mean most i think like 75 percent of the staff here is from out of state so we all kind of know what that is like mm-hmm. um and i think it's helped that we all are like that because we can kind of bond about that like anytime someone's like oh I'm going home for the weekend we're like we're not (laughs) we can't go anywhere um so I think that kind of helps but um yeah just what y'all said was true there's other resources and we can help with that or like you said Facebook groups Instagram like you can find people from anywhere so get people's Instagrams like when you Mm -hmm. meet them like get some sort of contact information that helps you stick in each other's memories Mm -hmm. there's also like five to 10 other colleges around here so like you said if this demographic isn't for you walk down the street and you're on DePaul's campus yeah, exactly. so it's like you can find people everywhere and I think that's what's really nice about going to like a college area versus like the family oriented places is like yeah. everybody on the street is our age going through what we're going through so it's like kind of nice that way yeah okay well I guess that's it for today um Thank y'all for listening. And if you have any other questions or concerns about this or about any topic similar, we're here to help. And um, thank you to our special guest, Gabe. Thank you, Gabe. And thank you to our new peer mentor, Addie, who will be here regularly. Yep. All right. Thank you.